of the wave when you're out in our reefs. It's a different experience. Welcome to the Surf Mastery Podcast. We interview the world's best surfers and the people behind them to provide you with education and inspiration to surf better. Because you roll real hard. Getting tuned in to look out for each other out there, that's the key. I'd like to welcome back to the show Tom Carroll. Tom, welcome back. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Great to be back. Yeah. Now, after that last podcast we did um, in summer, it was actually coming into summer, and we were talking about small waves a lot. And yeah. Just what you were saying about looking at the detail on the wave it changed my surfing 100%. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Like, I, I was always frustrated with one foot slop, and I, I bought a small wave board, a short, fat, flat board, and after that podcast, and I just, every time it was small, the, the beauty is it when it's small and crap like that, there's no one else out. So yeah. you've, got, you've got the line up to yourself. And after a few weeks of just trying and trying, I started to click into it and just got, had so much fun. Yeah, and yeah, you can start enjoying like crazy little surfs. And you go, oh, I had a really good surface. And they were just looking at you like, you know, you are tripping. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, there's so much more to offer than... Yeah, you know, our, our idea of like the perfect wave. Mm. Yeah, and uh, some of my funnest surfs are when it's small and just clean, and mm. I'd even say it's pumping, you know, because it's just you learn how to surf it, and there's no one else out. You go out there and catch twenty waves, and you're done. And like you say, like uh, pointed you towards the detail. Uh, whenever we go in the surf, it's not really about the wave so much as it's about us. So, so quite often, you know, well more times than often it's about how we're approaching it so we walk out in the surf or paddle out in the surf walk to the water at its edge and we take our board out there and we take ourselves whatever's going on and our body's either loose free or you know our emotional state's different so and that always can be a lot more open and we don't know it's always different for me so that's what's cool about surfing but that can be more open and a really crappy little fun funny little surf that doesn't look like much and we have more fun in those because we're more open yeah mm. yeah and you surprise yourself sometimes mm. it's actually a lot better when you get out there than it looks from yeah. the beach yeah. and it's just this is what you find these little walls and fun little runners sometimes it looks like it's not even breaking and you go out and it's actually a really fun wave mm, no that was awesome and it also helped a lot and i've started to get into a little bit of big wave surfing and good looking at that you have to look at the detail on those waves because there's so much wind and stuff mm. when you're that far out to sea. And I wanted to pick your brain about uh, big wave surfing, but okay. be before I do, let's talk a little bit about surf surfer's ear. Yeah, surfer's ear. Yeah, I've had a little journey with that uh, recently. I had uh, the exostasis removed from my right ear on uh, March for March 11, which put me out of the ocean for a few weeks. Uh, so the doctor wanted me out for a little bit longer, but <laughs> I'm not one for <laughs> listening to that stuff too well. I'm a bit naughty, but um, I just listened to my body and it was working fine. Uh, I didn't have any complications, so it was it was good. I wouldn't advise you going in the water with complications in your ear because all it does is um, exacerbate the situation. There's a lot of bacteria in the ocean that can get caught in your ear and and it's a really amazing environment. The ear and what I've learned about it is that um, is that its own environment in there, and the exostosis is is a bone growth that that's um, created by the body to protect one of the most important, uh, well, actually two of the most important s senses um, for survival, which is balance and hearing. So. Um, Way back in the day, you know, from back in the cave, balance and hearing from all the way then till now has been is a very, very important survival mechanism. So, you know, when we get out there in the ocean or wherever, whatever we're doing, even I understand truck drivers get it because of the wind coming through the the window onto the right ear for for us in the US on the left ear or in Europe. Um, the wind, not the salt water. It's not salt water. It's just all about the wind, it's particularly cold winds. Uh, and, you know, right now at the beginning of, of winter, we get, they're going to get all these sort of southwesters hitting, you know, Sydney in particular, the southerlies and southwest is a really good time to protect your ears. 
and, and get something in your ears, whatever it be, you know, like blue tack or some form of earplugs. And to get sort of regular with that is a really good idea for, for any surfer, really. Mm. Mm. So the bone growth is growing over the opening of the ear to protect the eardrum and the vestibular system. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. So then that's essentially, you prevent that bone growth happening if you wear earplugs because they're protecting those two things from the wind. That's correct. And, and in fact, and I don't know how true this is, but I've heard uh, that there's been some cases where guys have actually protected their ears, their ear canal, either by um, like a cap, like a wetsuit cap or uh, plugs and they've had the the growth actually recede uh, and also you don't just way less likely to get inf infection in there and that's our big complication is getting infection inside and in behind the exostosis uh, the bone growth and then it just doesn't want to in trying to treat that it becomes really difficult especially if it's a large covering or it's a, a really advanced covering something around about the 90 percent plus mark i think that's when real you have those complications where you get water caught in it you can't get it out bacteria in the water starts uh, multiplying in there and, and having a bit of a party in there so and you become the host to the last little guys and and hence you get a bit of an infection so we don't want to get that Anyway, uh, that's that's the result of yeah, the, the advanced exostosis. But yeah, it just basically wants to protect that that really important part of our body. It wants to keep us balanced, and we want to hear and want to be able to hear behind us, especially any dangers that are coming up behind us. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's pretty important to protect your ears. But what's put me off in the past with blue tech and and standard earplugs is you just lose most of your hearing <laughs> yeah but then i went and bought some of the surf ears oh cool and yeah. it, it hardly changes your hearing at all it's quite amazing mm. so i've been wearing those and it's i'm just used to it and it's it's fine yeah now that it's been a really nice product to be involved in uh for myself and it came along at a really good time for me <laughs> uh on a bunch of different levels but it's uh it's really nice to yeah be able to hear friends in the water i used to use blue tack uh, in, in my first, my left ear, um, I had my left ear exostasis removed in 2010, and I just used blue tack, and I knew that only I could only use it for over a short period of time because I just couldn't hear anyone in the water. I know that seems to be against what people kind of understand of me being in the water, <laughs> um, liking to surf with other people on the wave. You know, I've had some mm. friends, you know. <laughs> what do you mean you're wearing blue tack in your ears, Tom? Uh, was that another excuse not to drop in, you know, <laughs> or to drop in? <laughs> anyway, I, um, or share, you know. Uh, but I um, <laughs> I found it really annoying not being able to hear, you know. And, and these, these plugs are, are working out really well for me, you know, the the ability to hear while I'm, I'm, I'm plugged up. Yeah. Um, protecting. Yeah. So it protects you. It protects your ear against that growth forming. Mm, yep. And it also protects your ear against water getting in there as well. Correct. Yeah. But lets the sound in at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, the f cool thing is, uh, I know they come with a leash, a little leash um, setup, which I don't particularly use. But I've lost like blue tack and stuff out of my ear and things like that. But I was I was surfing some really big waves on the North Shore of Oahu this year, earlier this year, and and using them uh, the whole time, and uh, I didn't lose a pair. I mean, I got completely annihilated on the North Shore this year, and and they stayed in. So it's a really good design. Those guys, the the two you know, Swedish industrial designer surfers, who started it off, have done a really good job. Yeah, Surf Ears, awesome product. If you go to surfears.com, you can find out a little bit more. That's S-U-R-F-E-A-R-S dot com. There's also a tab there with um, a list of distributors. Uh, the Australian distributor is creatures.com.au as well, by the way. Um, but yeah, go to their website, check them out. Uh, a great investment for your surfing longevity. Also put a link to 
to those websites in the show notes as well. Mm. So big wave surfing. Yeah. So um, last year, Matt lent me one of his sunset, an old single fin sunset, 8.6, mm. and I started mm. um, playing around at uh, the bombies out here and Great. just fell in love with it and ordered my own uh, brand new Webster 8.6. Oh, I think I saw a photo of it. Yeah, for this year. Yeah. And uh, had a crack at Germans on that big swell a couple of weeks ago and so much fun. It's quite, it's quite a different experience isn't it riding mm. big waves i think the first the first thing i noticed i mean i've surfed eight foot mm. you know point breaks and reef mm-hmm. breaks and things um but you know when you're surfing an eight foot wave out on an outer reef or a bomby the the, mm. ma- the main difference i noticed was just the the speed at which the wave is moving through the water mm. you need a big board to actually catch it yeah. because the wave's moving so much faster it might not be any taller than a than, than a than an eight foot wave on, on the shore but the wave's still moving so quickly yeah, the volume mm. too, the volume of the wave when you're out in the outer reefs. It's a different experience uh, altogether, you know, well, especially when you go to places like Hawaii where you really, or, or Tahiti or anywhere where you're right on the edge of the continental shelf where, or right out there where there's no continental shelf, the wave speeds, you know, and you're looking at around about 20 second intervals uh, and you 19, 20 second intervals. That's when the waves are moving so super quick, and you know, like you got to pull your guts out to get to hold, get a hold of one of those waves. And that's what I mean. I'll think of what goes on now with the boys at Jaws and uh, and how they're approaching that stuff. It just it's just phenomenal how they can you know deal with that, the speed of those swells coming towards that reef. Uh, I remember towing that wave and just going, man, I'm just flying. I'm just just hanging on a little board, little tow board, 5.8. These guys are just dropping in on this big, heavy, you know, and the winds come up the face, and it's just incredible what they're doing. Yeah. Mm. Well, what do you think is the biggest risk when you start, for, especially for um, someone who hasn't had much experience, a beginner to, mm. to big wave surfing? What's the biggest risk? Drowning. I think... Uh, and it works back from there. Really, it uh, comes back to comes down to being real, pre- really prepared in yourself, uh, you know. And and I think it's probably a good idea to get some inflation, you know, uh, vest or some sort of um, or some something that actually holds you above the water, so at least you can get plucked out uh, at some point. It's also good to surf with people, you know, not to be the Mister Solo guy. I I I did get a couple of buddies that we like to do this sort of thing with and uh or tap into some of the yeah just basically a community of big wave riders guys that do it together and so they can support each other in the situations and maybe even if you've got a buddy who's got a jet ski uh or you have a jet ski with a buddy uh that you use that um off the side of the brake um as a a safety precaution so you can pluck the person out also go and do your um, advanced resuscitation uh, certificate so you know how to deal the situation when your buddy's uh, in in a bad way Mm. Um, that's going to be critical um, in any situation it's always good to have that knowledge but uh, you know just recently you know Aaron Gold um, was was literally I mean a very experienced big wave rider who's ridden a lot bigger waves than what he was out at at uh, cloud break last week and you have a situation where he was knocked out unconscious and uh and he needed to get plucked out now he's lucky to be alive and it was only through the fast um response to and the knowledge of the guys on board the boat and knowing how to get to him like mark healy and i know that uh, greg long was there these guys have a lot of experience and and knowledge on and, and there were lifeguards there so these these really important stuff and we just don't know and if you can even on top of that if you're going on a mission somewhere and you're thinking you're going to be a, a big wave rider guy and, and you've got a lot of experience even um try and have a a defib machine uh you know you know exercise that on on, on an unconscious to, yeah. body yeah because that 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 jolt is the one that's going to bring him back 
It's not necessarily a, you just want to get <laughs> punch him in the chest, freaking uh, <laughs> get them moving again. But that that's that's the crux of it. And you kind of work back from there, and uh, you know make sure your equipment's really good. That you like you said the Webster. You know you got this big board that paddles into waves. You feel confident on that board. Um, I think feeling confident with the equipment's really important. Super important. Um, and uh, yeah, developing a relationship with that piece of equipment. Yeah. But not just surfing in any big waves, but riding it in medium-sized waves. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah got familiar good. with the board and some smaller waves just out here. Just mm. got some weird looks, but you know, it, it wasn't about that. It was mm. just wanted to get to know that board. Mm. Uh, it kind of feels similar to a long board when mm. you're on small waves, and that's how big the boards are. You know, mm. they're pretty massive boards. Mm. But the biggest risk of drowning would be hitting your board, and uh, being held down. Uh, you know, quite often when we get, when we hit the water on on a big wave, we're moving at, at speeds. You know, for falling off halfway down the face, uh, or we get hit by the wave even um, the lip. Uh, we kind of get an empty lung hold down. You know, we get the empty lung hold land, and that's that sort of training that's really comes into play when we uh, understand how our body's going to respond when we've got no air and we're going to have to hold it for a while um and also knowing that you got if you've got a if you know how to use your vest you know if you've got a inflation to deploy um you know exactly where that thing is you've done it before you don't go fresh out to a 15 to 20 foot surf 25 foot surf and think you're kind of going to know um and just make it up on the moment because there's going to be moments, even when you do know, even when you've done all the training, that you're going to be shocked because you're in situations where maybe your shoulder's been popped, you're getting tossed over the fall, falls and everything's in shock. Your body's in shock. You, you've, you're feeling super vulnerable and you're in panic. You're going into a panic mode. So that sort of, and it doesn't matter, a lot of people in experience, I think, um, who are experienced have this sort of thing happen. Aaron Gold, brilliant uh big wave surfer, a lot of experience. I don't know what happened to him. I have no idea. It'd be nice to know um, his circumstances a bit closer just to understand because we're still sort of figuring ourselves out in these, these realms and yeah. and the young guys are really going for it. They need to know more and more information on how to care for themselves and be prepared because they're pushing it more now than ever and there. You know, I mean, Aaron Gold... Um, anything could have happened to him. He could have been knocked out by this board. He could have just been held down in an empty lung hold down, and then you just run out of air and you get held down for too long. And you go, you could go into panic mode, then you just lose all your oxygen. And so, and I think, I think training for that stuff uh, is really important. You, you want to feel prepared and you want to build your confidence levels up. And your ability to stay calm, I think that's like a... Yeah, so mm. you might only get held down for 30 seconds. Mm. Well, let's let's say it's a 15-second period and you get a two-wave hold down. That might be 45-second hold down. It's going to feel like five minutes. Four, yeah. <laughs> and, you, and you might be able to hold your breath for five minutes in a safe situation because you're calm, yeah. right? And you conserve mm. that oxygen. Mm. So your ability to be calm when you're under a big wave conserves your oxygen and makes it less likely for you to black out down there right yeah and and also it's depending on the situation like um if the better trained you are the more trained you are the the more confidence you'll have the more you're going to be pushing it possibly uh depending on your headspace but uh but you you'd think you'd be able to handle it but there's those odd situations where like a moment like a mentioned just a moment ago that where things didn't go when actually everything went against you like everything like a big one for me when i see the wipeout is garrett mcnamara's wipeout at um mavericks this year where he where he literally took the went for this massive wave and he got some air underneath his board. And I don't know whether you've ever seen this wipeout of his where he did his shoulder and tore his shoulder off. Basically tore his shoulder off. And ended up with his um, 
you know, he ended up wiping out and just sliding down the face of the wave and then his his arm got caught in the face of the wave and then it gets torn and his humerus ended up snapping and then the humerus got jammed up into his pec so and and is the head of his humerus completely and utterly disintegrated into all these bits, and so he he's coming back from a big one at the moment, and um, and that's what's happening at the moment. It's also for me it's scary around the shoulders because uh, Mark Matthews also got a really bad shoulder um, injury from from Jaws just um, you know warming up for the the WSL event. And back in December, I think it was, and and uh, the one that um, Billy Kemper won, and that morning session was really, really windy and crazy. And Mark took that really late drop and extraordinary drop. He didn't quite make it. And uh, yeah, so um, I'm not quite sure exactly the um, the full extent of his injury. Uh, I know Garrett's a bit better, but um, I know that he's. You know, Mark's just sort of coming back now. He's just, and this is quite a few months later, and um, and you just don't, yeah. You, 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 our shoulders are vulnerable in big waves. Yeah, mm. is that just from landing on the water? Or? Yeah. So when we land on the water, we want to. What first thing we want to do is actually put our arms out. You do want to. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Same thing happens kind of in snowboarding too. My experience was where I actually hurt my shoulder doing trying to do a spine jump. And I kind of just went to, f- I kind of f- over rotated and came down and jumped and fell on the flat a little bit. And it was higher than I'd never really been. And I kind of hit this flat bit and I kind of went down and I put my arm straight out, my f- my right arm straight out. And it, and it sort of tore back and it sort of subluxed the shoulder joint. And uh, I think that's what I do too when I wipe out on a big wave. I want to put my arms out to dive, to actually, you know, and it's probably... Break the water. Break the water, which is a good thing. But if we're flying along in situations and we've got our arms out, even getting pounded in the violent, violence of getting pounded underneath a 20-foot wave, you can have your shoulder um, torn around and, and just torn out. So that's you know our arms is something we want to try and keep in yeah <laughs> somehow close to our body in those wipeouts and yeah if you think about it i'd say um you know when you next time you get pounded by a big wave try to pull your arms in yeah yeah mm. okay but at the same time you want to break the you, surface yeah. with your hands yeah so your neck doesn't get everything yeah well you yeah. imagine if you got slapped on the ear mm. that would pop your eardrum yeah that happens that happens a nose. lot that's very, very... I've had that happen to me at Sunset Beach. Okay. Really, my first eardrum pop was at Sunset Beach in, like, 86. <laughs> Amazing day at Sunset Beach, and that was my right ear. Just got, you know, torn up. Yeah, you know, and ended up... Yeah, it was, it was a nasty feeling. I just slapped it. I was just... Amazing surf was building and took an air kind of drop on the West Peak and didn't quite land right on the rail and went down on my right side and slapped it and went back over the falls and I had that feeling of the fact feeling of uh, just like drinking a whole bottle of scotch in a second so like it's like whoa like, yeah just my whole all my equilibrium was gone and I couldn't paddle didn't know which way to paddle wow and a friend of mine came over and grabbed me and said where are you going because <laughs> it was luckily the last wave of the set but yeah, that our eardrums are really vulnerable on a big waves. Sometimes, you know, when it fits just a cruisy four foot, we just kind of fall off yeah. and land anyway. We you can't get away with that mm. when, the, when the waves are big. Not so much, but I noticed um, one really cool. I don't know what you know, like think about Shane Dorian and those guys at Jaws and Kyle Lenny and Kyle Lenny actually told me they goes, I go so what, when do you when do you actually deploy these? Inflative inflations, you know, like inflatable vests. And he goes, oh, I don't know. Like, he goes, I'd just been at Jaws last week. This is Kai, and he's Kai's a really nice guy. He's just always really super enthusiastic. He goes, Yeah, I know. I've been watching what those guys are doing. I was on the edge of this freaking 60 foot wave, and I'm watching Shane Dorian come down this wave and lose it on a 60 footer. 
<laughs> and I'm watching him, what he's doing with his vest, and he pulls it as he's going down. Oh, okay. You know? He's just going down. He just pulls that thing. So it inflates as he's getting... I mean, you might... And you get more of a pounding straight away. And you're going to get it. You're going to be thrown around a lot with all that, all that inflation. Anyway, he pulled it, and and Kai said he, he actually counted him out. He said... He said one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, and all of a sudden Dorian's up. So he was under four seconds on a six-foot wave. Wow! And you think, well, that's a good idea. Yeah. Because I wasn't quite sure myself. When am I going to deploy this thing? You know? Yeah. We're all trying to figure it all out at the moment. Yeah. And okay. pushing it out there. So mm. a vest is a worthwhile investment. Yeah. Yeah. If we can get a hold of a vest at this point, yeah. It's, there's going to be some really good stuff come up in the next few years mm-hmm. where we'll be able to sort of safely approach, you know, big, bigger waves, bigger conditions. Mm. Mm. So do they just have like little compressed air canisters inside? Yeah, CO2 can- canisters, and uh, and they pop. Same, they're the same mechanism as on, um, you know, like a life vest yeah. that you'd get uh, from underneath your, your seat in a, on an aeroplane. Um so um, very similar to that. Some have smaller canisters than others, but I think the big thing is for that uh, actual inner, the, the, the structure of the inner bladder um, must be really strong and heavy duty. You don't want to have a half grade inner, inner bladder to inflate because that thing's going to pop under the pressure. Mm. So, and th- they also have other vests that are just, they have lots of spongy sort of floaty material in, in them as well. Have you used those? Yeah, flotation. Uh, yeah, flotation um, pads like set into the suit. I mean, mm. that's been used That's been used a lot more today. And that's really helpful. That does help you f- feel like you're going to come straight up. Uh, I've used that quite a bit. And, uh, and also on the vests, we use the PDF PFDs, I should say, PFDs um, for um, using them on the jet ski and towing. Uh, we can swap those out and ride without the vest or put them on. Yeah, that, yeah, it's so good to feel like you're coming up on a bigger wave. But it's funny to think that I surfed that many waves when I was younger, all on significant size. You know, the 20-foot range with just a pair of board shorts on. <laughs> without a care kind of in the world so it's a very strange thing today to think that we've got to do all this stuff you know but i think it's a really good idea you know yeah when i think of what happened to aaron gold the other day um i know that you know his family we really bummed (laughs) yeah and i know that there's been we've lost a few along the way Simon mossy and and the list goes on todd chester and and so on so we want to protect ourselves mm. Mm. what are some other risks mm. oh, well of course the board hitting you yeah um, you know going in you I mean we're, we're just like a little we're just like this a bag of gel really you know a bag of jelly and sinew so as soon as you pop as soon as you pop through um, the skin the board board just sort of slices through and any sort of flesh real easy fins and and so on, like we all probably have felt before, um, um, you know, broken bones and dislocations and, and um, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, mm. yeah it is a very different game. I remember a, set, a, a clean-up set came through last week, and there was another surfer. He was at least 20 metres away from me, mm. and we, we got tumbled by the white water. And I came up and he was right there on top of me. Yeah. So you don't realise how far the other surface can move mm. if, if they're in a slightly different mm. position of the wave. So you've got to stay, stay well clear of yeah. others as well. Yeah, keep a real good eye out for others mm. and to particularly um, get really um, clear about how long your leg rope is mm. and what, how that plays out and how heavy your board is and how you know strong your leg rope is. It's really, really important. You want a good one. <laughs> I want a good leggy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, my leg rope broke out there. Oh, I've had that one. Yeah, yeah. out there. Yeah, I've had, I've had 
quite a few boards break out there. I've had lost my. S- I did a stand up paddle board out there and surfed out there, and the leg wrap popped and had to swim with the damn paddle. <laughs> you don't want that. <laughs> How did you go on the swim? Did you get your board? Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Yeah, yeah. just before the back bombing came out. Yeah. Pulled up. Mm. Yeah. No, it went straight towards the, the beach, actually. It didn't drift oh, over towards. Oh, good. So it was fine. It was a 100 meter swim. Nice. And then, but you know, I'd already I'd caught three waves. My mm. last wave, actually, I hit a bump on the halfway down the face mm. and I landed on my butt and mm. I got a quite a good salt water enema. Oh, good. Yeah. And that good feels odd. And a good that ball slap. Yeah, ball slap. <laughs> <laughs> So you just don't realise how fast you're going until mm. the water feels like concrete, you know? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It's hard. Do you try and, if you're in that situation where you get bounced and you feel like you're going to either land on your bum or your feet, which would you choose? Mm. Would you straighten your legs out or would you curl up or? I don't know, I'm sort of more inclined to um, like do a bomb, you know, like, yeah, my my knee, I've got to be really careful with my right knee. So I'm all, Almost sort of like subconsciously preserving my right knee, so everything else comes second, third, yeah. fourth, fifth. You know, like I don't want to go straight legged into anything. But, um, it's it's so on the moment. Mm. You no, know, you know, for me, it's so on how I'm doing it at that very moment, and being in a good space, head space, and I can sort of feel it out, and um, and then take it like like this you know, many, many wipeouts I've had before or moments where I've had to take that kind of hit. So have you done much training for big waves or is it all through experience? Um, never really did any really specifically really big wave, you know, training. Other, You know, I did swimming and some breath work and some strength work on the body where um, it's mostly, you know, body weight work, like to get, Everything supported, mm. um, kind of almost like strength, like work, real resistance training before Hawaii, and whilst in Hawaii, that's helped me feel feel solid and strong in the situation. So, what's the breath work you've done, and wh- and when and how do you use that? Um, just I got it off Nam, like the first tramps, the first stuff we did with Nam. Um, oh, I don't know how long ago that was. That was a while back. I did it with the Sandal Warrior, and we did. He came and did some stuff with us at a um, a training camp, and we did a few um, the session in in a twenty five meter pool, and on the Gold Coast, and Nam put us through a session, uh, some empty lung hole uh, hole laps, empty lung work, mm-hmm. and that made a lot of sense to me. So I did. I've done more of that stuff that's tricky on your own you need to be I needed to be with more people I did a few things with um, using Russian kettlebells running underneath the water and in the pool and then putting myself to the limit with that and also sprint training in the pool so it's just all interval so you're really stretching your lungs out doing swim squads things like that just to build that capacity mm. so it sort of helps the confidence in the ocean know that you can actually swim yourself out of situations I think that's really important to know that you've got to be able to be ready to help someone or be ready to uh, help yourself out of the situation and to be strong enough to do that mm. okay yeah so getting in touch with what it feels like to mm. be underwater with no air in your lungs mm. Nan's got some really good stuff. Yeah. So he, yeah, the BET like, uh, training is, is, is awesome. Yeah, and those courses are, are readily available as well. At the mm. moment, he's doing he's a lot of He's pumping them out everywhere, is he? Yeah. yeah. Great. Yep, so jump on board that. Yeah, I, I might tap into that too. I've got a bit of a break coming up with a knee surgery. And I need to, during that time, I set, I've set a bit of a program, but just to... Um, yeah, I have to feel it out for a week, but then I am getting into that mm. stuff and get myself prepped. It's a bit of an unknown world with a weird knee at the moment, but uh, <laughs> but that'd be a cool place to go and sort of you know challenge myself. Mm. Another thing you mentioned on the last interview was the feel of the wave. 
Mm. And that's something I found that when surfing the big waves, you've really had to be tuned into because your paddle, by the time you're about to, to drop down, you can't really see anyway because there's, nah. so, there's so much wind and chop. Mm. So it is all feel. Mm. So you've really got to... I've done a lot of practice of being... You know, aware, a lot of training with my eyes closed, mm. so I was in touch with that, and I think that mm. helped a lot as well. Yeah, that would, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. the, ch- the, the chop and the wind, even mm. if it's not windy, like just the, the wave speed just itself the, makes mm. it windy. Yeah, you get this wind speed at the top of the waves so different compared to the yeah. normal. Yeah, I'd like to know what the that sort of thing is. I always sort of had this kind of fantasy about having one of those bat suits when I was when I was in it wasn't even didn't even know about those those glider suits but in the 80s was because we were surfing Sunset Beach and when a west set west swell come in and you get this trade wind and the the wind speed at the top of the wave you literally had to feel your way like I said just feel your way into the paddle and then there's a time when you just couldn't see so you needed to actually feel your way over and down into it um (laughs) <laughs> but I was so hungry to get the wave <laughs> that I just override it. Yeah. But um, yeah, there's something in that what you're saying, like doing it, training with your eyes closed, training like bouncing with your eyes closed, doing that sort of stuff. Yeah. Get body awareness, come back to your body all the time. But it's always in a sort of um, full action mode. Mm. So you just sort of almost do it with in a full action movement. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and but also you, you're when you stand up and you're dropping in, it's really you've got to be really careful with how you hold your hands because mm. you've got to be aerodynamic as well. Yeah. yeah, doing the bottom turn is done almost done with your hands. I felt just through the wind and yeah, it's all very subtle, and yeah. and you can see that when the guys are taking the drop at jaws, and every little movement's so important for them. You know, every little movement, so every little adjustment, it's all feel. It's no thought. It's just all on the moment feel and kind of like sort of sensing where you're at uh, at a really kind of um, a broader overall sensing of of the situation and being right on the, on you know, something underneath your feet that's moving so quick and the little bumps and chops, which are actually can be a lot bigger out there. So, yeah, you're always adjusting to that stuff. It's like a... So you kind of, yeah, you, I love that feeling, though, that feeling of feeling way down a, a big face. It's And when you get one of those ones that is smooth, it's, like, really special. <laughs> it's like I can imagine, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, you almost wanted it like a five knot onshore. Yeah, none of the onshores are good on a big wave. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, you get that glidey kind of. Yeah, you get the first wave just knocks all the, you know, you know, smoothens out the, the the water, and then you get the second one that actually stretches more and draws a little bit more, maybe. And and you just get this nice big smooth face. Yeah, I love that. When it's slightly on shore it's probably better. And plus you paddle in's much easier. Cool. And I mean it's despite all the risks and and stuff, it's it's an amazing experience, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. And it's amazing for the rest of you. Like after that day, having surfed those waves and then I surfed the next day and it was still quite big, but I just went out to the local beach and my shortboard and mm. it just just it felt so easy yeah and it felt so much faster and after mm. having had that experience mm. Mm. and mm. yeah I, I guess that if every surf you have when it's big kind of adds on to that oh yeah i know that uh you know my my buddy ross clark jones he's like uh you know who who will spend a lot of time in hawaii surfing the biggest ways he possibly can <laughs> and um and and months and you know especially in this last one uh where you know like this is el nino it was just a crazy year whereas like it would be 10 or 12 feet and he's like going mm, yawn you know like that's boring you know like it's, he's off doing something completely different because it's small you know like and everyone's like 10 or 12 feet and it's small think about that headspace mm. it's like a yeah you know like it's um pretty funny to yeah. think that. 
it's a cool contrast. So like really improving your small wave game, and then having a crack at big waves. Mm. Both those extremes just makes the you know the two to four foot surfing so much more fun. Yeah, yeah. And you go jump jump down your little boards, and they just you know they move around the wave. Your body responds differently, and uh, it's more gymnastic in the movement. It's not a whereas it's a more of a static hold. On big wave surfing, it's more of a static hold, and you're kind of making those really tiny adjustments going down the face, and even even off the bottom turn, and you can't move around the big board like that. Mm, no. As soon as you jump back down the little board, and the little waves, it's so much fun. There's not that threat. You don't have that kind of fight or flight thing going on anymore. It's more like this sort of nice feeling of just being calm in the water and and kind of a calm froth. Mm. <laughs> more of a calm froth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so to to summarize, if someone wanted to have a crack at, at some bigger waves, they need the right equipment. Yep. They need to be with someone who's done it before, ideally. Correct, yeah. At least one other person. That's if you're starting out. Yeah. Mm. And it's always good to be with someone anyway, I think, in those conditions. I think uh, being the solo guy isn't necessarily... Um, you know, you can try it, but it's your your your, your chances. If something happens, you it's not worth the risk. It's not worth the risk, yeah. And plus, you really enjoy it with a buddy taking a risk. The 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 connection you get after it is awesome. Mm. Yeah, and you'd be surprised. Like the, sometimes I've I've surfed back bombing, and it's not actually that not actually that much swell, but it's breaking, mm. and it's not. It's not even almost big wave surfing, yeah. but you can still go out there and experience Feel it. Yeah. How, what it feels like to catch a fast moving wave mm. on a big board. Mm. And that's that's how I got into it last mm. year, and that prepared me for the, the big yeah. swell last week. Yeah. So ease into it as well. Yeah, try to ease in. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Yep. Keep it safe. The mm. right equipment. Where do you get the vests from? Is there a company that's doing some good ones? Um, yeah, there will be. Uh, there will be coming up, and I think. Um, there's been an awesome collaboration between Quicksilver and uh, and Aqualung, and that I'm not sure how when that's going to be available on a commercial level uh, out for the market. Um, I know that that's going to be that that'll roll out at some point, but I'm not sure exactly when. But that's they'll have all different levels. I know they will. Uh, it's a great vest, and a lot of the guys were using them in Hawaii this year, mm-hmm. and and were supplied them through, you know, for the Eddie Okao yep. event, and each competitor got um, a vest to use and to keep, and um, which was really cool. There, you know, and there's I know that Patagonia made uh, a vest um, set up for underneath the wetsuit. And yeah, you can make holes in the wetsuit to um, get the tabs out to pull. I've I've had one of those, which was effective. Um, and I'm not sure. No, not quite sure what Billabong did. They had something going too. I'm okay. not sure uh, what they're doing. And now, I mean, it's a tricky part of the business to get involved in. It's a whole new world. Um, a safety device as such and so they've got to get it right yeah and and being liable is 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 a big one for a big company or you know a company out there yeah so uh, i'll just keep looking out uh, um you know i know that there's in europe there's already there's decathlon which is a huge department store chain and they have a big sporting department store chain and they do a series of uh, inflation inflatable vests just okay. for people, really basic ones yep. that are available. I know in Europe, but I'm not sure. I think in, I know in France and so on. But therefore, uh, anyone like yep. they're just um, basic kind of vests you could put over anything that do the same thing. So they are but, out there for the general public already. Yeah, but they didn't look very secure to me. Yeah. And for a surfer's point of view, having it really nice and secure, tight to the body, and when you know, designed specifically specifically for getting rolled real hard, mm, yeah. <laughs> that's what we want. Yeah, mm. yeah. But for now, I mean, a, a, 
padded flotation vest is going to be yeah at the moment a good investment a good investment is um padded flotation and uh yeah like set into the wetsuit yeah i know a few companies that do that and which is really cool yeah so when a cleanup set's coming through mm. and you've got this massive wall of white water coming towards you mm. Do you wait till the last second and you jump up, you stand up on your board and dive down? Or what's the best strategy in that situation? Yeah, you just said it. Uh, yeah, just try to get, uh, yeah, big, big old white water. Just time it so uh, you've you can you can get some distance underneath the water, mm-hmm. away from the white water. You're gonna get grabbed by that white water, by the way. You're not gonna escape it. If it's like if the 15 foot white water uh, coming towards you, 10 to 15 foot white white water for your average sort of person you know approaching me way of riding even an eight foot six to eight foot white water well it's going to grab you as you dive down but uh on a on a, a deeper wave you know with the reefs you know and you get a 15 foot wave 15 foot white water to 20 foot white water that thing's going to grab you and rip and tear you no matter what so and you hopefully got some sort of flotation device with you but just get ready uh, to get ripped and torn. But a good thing is to try to get a bit of distance. Okay, so if, a if deep breath and then... Real lot of breath in there. Dive under. Don't don't hyperventilate. Because yeah, uh, you just want to take one big, one nice big even breath right down deep into your... Uh, right down deep in towards... If, if you can think about when you take a breath or if you practice breathing down into your hip area, right down to the lower area of the abdomen you can um get plenty of air in there and have plenty of time yeah mm. and that's a flotation device in itself in itself yeah, you, yeah. you're you gonna come up yeah mm. and do you count while you're under i never no never count when i'm down there after a certain amount of time should you be trying to swim up or um my rule of thumb is that i after a little while if i'm feeling a little bit rolled around and a bit disorientated I will open my eyes up and look for the light. Yep. And wherever we see light, it's like, it's you know, it's upwards. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we just look for the light and sense that light. We might not see it straight away, but we'll sense it where it's at. And then there'll just be darkness and lightness and um, those things will come apparent and just go up through the veins. Usually there's sort of, you know, clouds of, of white water um, and... And then there's veins of light, and it's going to hit hit up through the veins of light. Okay. Mm. So the veins of light is mm. less turbulence. Generally less turbulence, and you will find your way to the surface. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And do you climb your leash? I've done that before. I pulled my, you know, really felt where my board is through the leash. Yeah. Is that always up though? Not necessarily. Um, and if you can't feel the tension on your leash be aware that board's going to fly around somewhere and that's that's com- sometimes more scary. Yeah, it's true. Uh, the board could be flying around so be, just be really aware that that board be, could be flying towards you. Um, it's like a loose cannon. <laughs> so um, if you're not feeling it, uh, really protect yourself as you're coming. Um, protect your face and, yeah. and you know, put your arms up and definitely protect your face. That's my response to that feeling. Of not knowing where my board threw, no tension on the leg rope. I've had boards in the face, I've had boards in the head, and I've had, yeah, I've actually had a leg rope wrapped around my neck uh, from behind. So my leg was kind of scorpioned over the back, and the leg rope was wrapped around my neck and being pulled, the board being pulled like the other way. So I had to kind of pull the tension off the leg rope to get it off my leg, my neck and then all of a sudden it went loose <laughs> and I didn't know where it was and then kind of thing came back and s- slapped me in the face. It was the most bizarre scenario I'd ever had. That was inside Sunset Beach and I'll never forget that. It was just so scary because I was in a weird position. I don't know how I got in there but yeah. um, that was a, a shocker. So, yeah, be careful. Be careful with that leg rope and uh, there are times though where I've pull myself up by the leg wrap mm. Mm. so I suppose when you're coming up towards the light mm. you're just you're so in need of a breath yeah but you've also got to be aware you've got to protect your head yeah when you break the surface yep. because it's not just your board you've got to worry about other people 
even he might have been 30 meters away from you when the mm. wave came but he mm. might be right on top of you yeah. when, by then or someone else's board mm. might have their leash might have broken it might be coming mm. straight towards you or anything mm. so and I'm sure there's some times when you're coming up you're about to see light you're about to get a breath and then the next wave hits mm. and you, and you go under again <laughs> yeah they've had that one that's a sh- that's yeah. tricky but the most Im- the most difficult one is that one we've got to hold yeah that that um empty lung hold down mm. when we're we had all the air blown out of us on the on the slide down the face and and the impact and uh that's what we've got to kind of train for really mm. okay mm. awesome i think that's all the questions i have yeah i got all ammoed up for the next session yeah yeah good yeah good grip too bit of wax <laughs> helps. Yep. Yep. Yeah. The right the right wax. The right wax and a really good covering. Yep. Um I'm not one for really big wax jobs, but um when I go out and it's solid um I, I give myself a good wax up. Mm. Mm. The whole board too. Yeah, the whole board. Yeah. Yep. Lots of bumps and combing. Mm. You want to have a nice grip. Yeah. What about the quad versus thruster on those big boards? Oh, yeah, that's a really important thing. Um, well, the quad is a bit more efficient uh, with water flow through the back of the board. Mm-hmm. Um, when you've got a thruster, the thruster tends to be feel more solid, uh, you know, and, and more anchored down, uh, but there's more drag. Okay. With the center fin aiming directly straight, um, the center fin kind of gets in the way as soon as you lay the board on the rail or you get the board right over on the edge the center fin actually starts to play a kind of a um a more of a hindrance role like it starts to just slightly get in the way of the way the water wants to move off the back of the board Mm. and when we have the quad set up and the and the fins are set up correctly in in line with themselves in in a really proper alignment with a point way off uh, on towards off the nose of the board so uh, they've got this really nice uh, angle to the fin there's there's it's way better into the angle of attack of the turn the f- the, the water wants to come through the back of the board unhindered and we just get a little bit more release so we're able to escape the wave better and okay. actually hold on to speed and uh, you know, you're getting a lot of speed, like you mentioned, on the wave, uh, and we want to kind of hold on to that speed. And the quads are just a little bit better, a bit more efficient in, in the water flow off the back of the board. You can reduce the size of your fins, so you've got less drag again, and use more of the rail of the board to okay. to hold you. Mm. So a small, stiff fin is fine. Yeah, yep. small, stiff fin, and probably uh, um, seventy, thirty foil on the front and 50 50 on the back okay so you've got this sort of um real neutral fin so um, a quad setup would be better for a beginner because it's faster um look uh the quad setup is is definitely for someone who wants to ride really you know big waves and and push it and um, it it doesn't really matter whether you're, you know, just starting out and feeling it out. Um, but it's just going to be a little bit more efficient, you know, whether you're advanced surf or intermediate. Uh, the board, the quad set up on a bigger wave works more efficiently. But then again, um, some people like the more sturdy feeling of being on a thruster. And that's a really personal personal thing. Mm. I know the Ross Clark Jones, he likes to use, he, he loves his thruster. Yeah, um, and he's really effective on it. Mm. There's no doubt about it. Mm. Mm. What about that little nubster fin that people use sometimes with the quads? Oh, uh, the one on the back. Yeah, uh, that sits in. Yeah, the one that Kelly Slater kicked yeah. off with a few few years back. You ever tried that on big waves? No, I haven't. No, I haven't tried it on a big wave. It's probably not a bad idea to think about. You know, if that feels better for you on the smaller wave, and then you might be able to want to. You know, might because what happens on a big wave? You're tra- traveling a lot faster. The physics of it means that the fins get bigger, so the size of the fin, you know, does matter mm. uh, on a bigger wave. So, um, 
that's what happens, and you we can reduce the size of the fins. Mm. Okay. Mm. Cool. I think we covered a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Cool, right. Mike. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. That was yeah. valuable information. Well, it's a, it's an honour. It's good. I like sharing, and um, it's just learning. We're just still learning. Yeah. <laughs> still figuring it out. We've got we've come a remarkably long way, but we have still got a long way to go. <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, awesome. All right. I feel mm. much better now. Kind of. Yeah. A, few, a few stories that put me off, but mm. <laughs> some some information that will help me to to keep mm. it as safe as possible at the same time. Yeah. Which is, which is good. And it's just yeah, getting tuned in to look out for each other out there. That's the key. Yeah. Mm. All right. Thanks, Tom. Awesome. Cheers, Mike. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to the Surf Mastery Podcast. Again, I'm your host, Michael Frampton. Make sure you subscribe so you can keep up to date with the latest interviews. Please share with your friends. Check us out uh, on Facebook at uh, Surf Mastery Surf. And if you're on iTunes, please go and give us a little rating. That'd be awesome. Until next time, keep surfing.